So one of the best epic champions, quite accessible because she's not a void that you could probably build out and not even invest too much into because she doesn't require much is Allure. Allure is an epic champion from the Demon Spawn and Magic Affinity. And she's an excellent champion specifically for the Dark Fae. That's mainly where I use her. But if you wanted to use her in something like Fire Knight, she's awesome because of her A1, which provides a three hitter with a chance to decrease turn meter. So going up against the Fire Knight, and I, I forgot to mention this, but you need 100% crit rate because it says here it decreases the target's turn meter by 25% on each critical hit. You need 100% crit rate. You want to have somebody that places a lot of hits and then also decreases the turn meter because you want to make sure that the Fire Knight is having his turn meter kept down so his shield doesn't go back up so you can kill him fast. She does provide decreased defense, the small version of it. It's a two hitter, places sleep, but that's not that important. And then her A3 kind of does damage, but I don't really use her for this. It's mostly just for making sure that the A1 is popping off all the time. She provides extra accuracy in faction crypts, and then she also has Phantom Touch on her so that she has a chance to inflict bonus damage and get some boost to stats over here as well. Allure is one of those champions that doesn't actually necessarily require a specific set. She doesn't even need to be fully booked. She doesn't even need masteries. She is the quintessential example of a champion that can do just fine with stats over sets. But if you if you can get sets on her, why not? As always, do not blindly copy masteries, but go ahead and blindly copy these masteries. We're going down the defense tree for some extra survivability because she is a little bit squishy, especially early on if you can't help her to survive. So we're taking some extra heals and damage mitigation by way of shadow heal and uh, rejuvenation, as well as decrease crit damage. Um, damage? <laughs> And then a resurgent for a chance to remove block or a chance to remove uh, debuffs as well as damage mitigation with delay death. And then here, really important, counterattack masteries. If you can get them, take them. We're taking the accuracy route, extra stats here, evil eye to push back turn meter even further, even more so than she already does. We're taking evil eye to push back turn meter even further, even though she already does it with her A1. And then Sniper for any other debuffs that you possibly could want. We're taking Accuracy in case you're missing out on Accuracy. Her A1 actually already does a decrease, so you don't really need to take Masteries. Now, you don't actually need Sniper because her A1 doesn't have a chance. It just does it by itself. So you don't need to take Sniper. You could take something else, but you know, if I'm putting Masteries on her, why not? In fact, you could go down here and take Giant Slayer. That's also a good option. Just go down this route. If you want some extra damage, take Giant Slayer so you get some bonus damage in. Uh, but we needed ac but we needed accuracy at the time, so I just put her like this. I actually have my allure in Relentless for an 18% chance to get an extra turn. And each I didn't I didn't see this before. Each consecutive chance reduces by 45%. Huh. That seems relatively new. I thought. I thought it was just 18%. In fact, it was like 23% at first, right? Right? Do Masteries affect Relentless? So if you happen to not have multiple Allures, and you only have one, even if you do have two Allures, a Relentless set is awesome to put on your Allures, because if they can just proc those extra turns from the Relentless set, they're pushing back turn meter so many times and hitting any of the bosses so many times, or whoever you're attacking, that they can't do anything, and that's quite valuable. If you don't have Relentless, then I would suggest building her really fast, as fast as possible. But remember, her A1 still requires accuracy. To push back turn meter, you're going to require accuracy. So let me show you the pieces of gear that I currently have on her. Prioritizing speed and accuracy again, guys. And we put in some survivability here. Right here. Just so that she doesn't die right away. But in, I don't think she actually ever gets close to dying. But here are her stats. 257 speed for the Dark Fey, you actually only need 251. Also for the Dark Fey, you only need 355 accuracy. Obviously, we're prioritizing speed and accuracy, and the more that you have, the better. And don't forget to push back turn meter. Reliably, you need 100% crit rate because your A1 will only push back turn meter with 100% crit rate. 
especially going up against Fire Knight. Fire Knight Normal, so if you can push back that turn meter on Fire Knight Normal, then that would be ideal. I don't necessarily recommend bringing her into Arena. She doesn't seem like the best Arena champion. Not that she won't, like, do really well, because you could just keep pushing back somebody's turn meter so they can't do anything, but then again, I, I don't think that's the best place to use her. All right, so, so right now we're going to go into the Fire Knight. We're not going to do hard, but we're going to bring it down to stage 20, just so you guys can get a good idea of, of uh, how everything works here. Let me take off these legendary champions and let's just use let's just use epics this is the team that i'm going to try and use for stage 20 just to show you guys all epic relatively free to play the gear might not be free to play to be honest with you but these champions are because they're none of these guys are voids and i don't have any presets we're just going to go into stage 20 and see what happens but ideally for going up against the boss at least, you would want to set it so that she only does her A1. Royal Guard actually provides um, some semblance of uh, assistance for the Fire Knight because he does have a 4 hitter on his A3, also pushes back turn meter with his A3 and decrease speed. But actually Stag Knight places decrease speed with his A1 and that's a 2 hitter. Deacon's good because he brings in more speed. He's able to place decreased defense and turn meter manipulation. And of course, we have Farrakh in the fat because he just has his ally protect. Or sorry, not ally protect. He's got his uh, ally attack move. So really great for Fire Knight. Or just a really great champion in general. If you haven't seen the guide that I have on him, feel free to check that out. Now we're going up against the boss. This isn't optimized, but I'm just showing you guys that this is possible to do if you're struggling with fire knight allure is going to help you out quite a bit watch this we're pushing back turn meter all the way and the fire knight is not able to do anything pushing back turn meter even further using stag knight temptation we don't really need it we could have just done a1 but that's because i didn't place any presets we're also placing decreased defense and decreased attack with stag knight we've got some more turn meter manipulation with deacon here comes the EMHP move. Oh my gosh, we are negative affinity. So that did not pop off, but Farrakh and the Fat comes in clutch right here, hitting with the ally attack. Royal Guard goes in for the second hit. Temptation, Phantom Touch proc, but it didn't really do anything. But Deacon comes in with some more turn meter manipulation. We're going to be pushing back even further. Look at that. He's not even able to take a turn at all. That shield is not coming back up. This might be a little bit slow, but if you were to put a damage dealer in here, I guarantee... Or another damage dealer, I guarantee that you'd be doing this a lot faster. We got the debuffs going on. The weak hits are proccing. The weak hits are proccing and we're not doing anything. But here it comes with the ally attack. Is this the end of it? We did push back the turn meter all the way. And look at this, guys. Within two minutes, five seconds, we are able to clear stage 20 of the Fire Knight. And Allure was integral um, in that run. Pushing back turn meter is just huge. But okay, maybe you're a little more advanced and you're way past Fire Knight or you've already figured that out. Well, have you tried using her in Doom Tower? If you are struggling up against the Dark Fey, Allure is part of this team. And if you want to see a video on how to do that, check this video out right here.